G'day, welcome back to the 40 channel. So it's upgrade time again for the Troopy. Today we're gonna to be doing electronic ignition. Yeah, we're gonna be ripping out the old points in the condenser and we're gonna be chucking in this electronic ignition kit. Now, if you're in Australia, this kit comes from Retro Road and Track. I jumped online and bought it. I have no idea about how it runs, what it does. Now there's a few claims, they claim that it gives better performance and even a little bit of fuel efficiency. So, there's only one way to try and find out. This kit comes with really extensive instructions. So I'm gonna highly recommend that you don't take this video as gospel because there could be some things that are very different with your car. And I do not wanna be held responsible for you guys blowing up a coil or blowing your kit up and making it no good. So highly recommend that you go through all the instructions, check it all, read it all, and make sure that you're doing exactly what it says. Having said that, we're gonna to try to do the best we can and show you how it works and how it fits up to an old 40 series Land Cruiser. Righto, so the first thing I've done is I've just checked my timing to make sure that the timing on this vehicle is okay. It was a little bit out. Righto, to access your timing, it's on the back of the flywheel. So undo your little cap with the 10 mil screw and expose that uh, timing needle. Timing gun, now these are pretty cheap. So you can pick up these timing guns from uh, Toolking, jump online, give them a call, and that way you can check all your timing and make sure it's right. So we've got our timing right before we make any changes to the ignition. The next thing we need to do, this is really important. Make sure that you go through the instructions and double check this for yourself. So the things we need to check is our voltage, some ohms, make sure that they're all within spec and we're not out of range, otherwise again, we can quickly damage the electronic ignition. So, one of the things I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna check my voltage to make sure we're not overcharging. I'm gonna check my, I'm gonna check my ballast and my resistor to make sure that the ohms are within spec as per the instructions. Right, so as you can see, I don't have an issue starting the vehicle up. It starts up first time, pretty much every time why it's nice warm weather. When we get our cold winters here in Bathurst, it does struggle a little bit, but still haven't had any issues firing it up. Let's check our voltage. Righto, we've got 14.2 volts. Righto, so everything's tested. We've got the new coil in. Now we're going to start ripping apart the distributor and pull out all the old points, condensers, a whole lot, and put in the new kit. Right, so the first thing we need to do is take the cap off the top of the distributor. There it is there. We can just sort of tuck that up out of the way there. We've got our low tension wire that was hooked up to our resistor. We want to take that off. And when we take that off, we take out our points and condenser and we've actually got a hole coming through and we're going to run a rubber grommet through that hole. I'll show you that thing. Make sure that we keep all the screws, clips, everything. Because we'll reuse them, but we won't, re but we won't need any of the other stuff. There, underneath it. Righto, so we've removed the, uh, the points, we've got the condenser out, we've kept the screws. We've also pulled out the little bolt that came through the bottom that held the low tension wire in and we've put the little supplied grommet in. Now that grommet will allow our wires to come out from our new electronic ignition. So the first thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean it all up because it's pretty dirty and mucky in there and then we can start fitting in the new electronic ignition. Exciting. Righto, so we've just fed the wires through that little grommet. Now unfortunately the wires are nowhere near long enough to reach anything I need. It's not a major issue, it just means we're gonna to have to lengthen these wires and be able to bring them up to where we need to go. All right, it's very important that you put that heat sink paste on the back of it. 
make sure you put that down. Use the existing screw we pulled out. We can screw that back in. Now I've only got one screw hole that lines up. Hopefully that's okay, it's not gonna go anywhere. All right, so now we've got our trigger ring and they say that just pushes straight over the top. Feels a little bit, a little bit loose. See that? It's a bit sloppy backwards and forwards. Now they do say if that's the case, you can put a little bit of shim behind it to pack it out. So we might uh, just put a little bit of dob of glue just underneath it, just to stop it sort of moving. Right, we're just going to use a tiny bit of the 8454 rapid stick. Just put a tiny little dob. Uh, we refit our rotor and we can throw our cap, distributor cap back on. Plug anything back up that you might have unplugged. Make sure it's all nice and firm. Now we need to uh, hook the wires up to our new coil. Right, so the only recommendation for this kit is that the, the wires are longer because as you can see we've got to get over here and we're way short. Not a major drama. Wiring up our last little bits and pieces. Tightening everything back up. Now we should be able to turn the key and see what happens. I am a little bit nervous. <laughs> right, let's give it a crack, eh? Right, right here we go. Nelly. Right, uh, something's not quite right there. But it started, <laughs> so that's a good sign. Right, let's check our timing and see what that looks like. Right, so our timing was a fair bit out. So luckily, it's an easy fix. We just uh, adjusted the uh, screw and uh, fixed our timing up and... Done. Look at that. Now, oddly enough, I don't know if it's just me, but it does sound like it is actually running a lot smoother. Anyway, we'll take it for a drive and see how it goes, eh? Righto, so you're not going to believe this. We took it out for a test drive. Everything was going awesome with the electronic ignition. Seems to be no issues driving along and then there was a bit of a cough, a splutter. And I was struggling driving up the highway. There is nowhere to pull over. There's trucks and everything behind me. I'm thinking, oh no, something's going wrong here. It's jumping and spluttering. I stopped dead in the middle of the highway. Nowhere to pull over. <laughs> There is a huge traffic line behind me. I've broken down. Brand new electronic ignition. I'm thinking to myself, what the heck has happened? But it didn't feel like a spark issue. It felt like a fuel issue. Truck drivers, a whole lot of other guys all jumped out of the cars and their trucks, pushed me off the side of the road, pulled over to the side of the road, got it started again, got it home. It's coughing and spluttering all the way home, thinking, what's happened? What's happened? Brand new electronic ignition. What's going on? It felt like it was starving of fuel. I pull it up here. Fuel line. Broken fuel line. This is a little bit of fuel line tucked right up under the chassis. I hadn't seen this before. It goes from a hard line to a hard line. And it was cracked right there. 
and it was sucking air in and making all sorts of issues. So, so our first test drive with the electronic ignition went amazing, but it seems like you need fuel to keep the car running and keep the ignition going. So there you go. But anyway, guys, that's the AccuSpark electronic ignition. That's how we installed it. Yes, it runs really well. It works really well. Just make sure you got fuel to the car be so that the electronic ignition can fire up those spark plugs and do what it needs to do. Right, so this wasn't a sponsored video whatsoever. I wanted to give it a go and try it out and see how it'll work out. And hey, listen, I recommend it so far. I've only had it on the road for an hour or so, but we'll keep you tuned on how it goes. Now this stuff is the AccuSpark uh, electronic ignition kit. You can buy it all over the world. Here in Australia, the uh, dealership is Retro Road and Track. Jump on their web page, you can get it from them. And I rang them up and asked them a few different questions. Very helpful people. Righto guys, that's it for this video. Really appreciate your support. If you want to keep up to date with it, make sure you subscribe and follow along. And until next time, take care of yourselves.